Pippin has taken it over and it is hers now. This, do you see? There's so much cat hair on this thing now. Michelle here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over everything that I have crocheted in the last six months. First off, I changed my hair. I have to address it because this is the first video of my new hair look. My sister did it for me. It looks really cute. It's coming off like way more blonde on screen, but I want to actually go a little bit blonder. Every three to four years, I'm like, I should go blonde. And then I do. I also decided to wear this cute little sweater. I actually made it well over a year ago, so I figure if I'm doing a crochet video of all my crochet things, I probably should be wearing a crocheted item that I made. This video is just so daunting to make because there's so much to go through. It's crazy. Here we are, halfway through the year. Can you believe it? It's already halfway through 2023. Not me. I haven't made one of these videos since the end of December. That was a video of me going over everything I crocheted in 2022, so if you're new to my channel and you're interested in watching it, I will link it. Also going to be linking every single video that all these items are in in the description. So if you haven't watched them, they're all going to be there when you're done this video. Or if you want to watch those videos first and then come back here, because this is kind of like a here's this, but also what I liked about it, what I might have changed about it. Will I make another one? Will I redo it kind of video as well. So you're going to kind of get like a more in-depth look at the things that I made and how I've used them throughout the last six months. And some of them I haven't even used yet because because I made it last week. I also wrote a list because I, I've forgotten things in the past when I've made these type of videos. So I'm sticking to the list this time and I guarantee you, I probably will forget something in the editing. Michelle will be like, how did you forget that? I almost did forget something, but I just remembered it. So it's fine. But anywho, we're gonna start all the way back in January of 2023. The first thing that I really made in January was this really cute green and white checkered hat. Now being June, I don't know where it is because it's a hat and I haven't worn a hat in a while. This is the photo of the hat. I really like the hat. It was a very pretty hat. I think I made it with the Patron, Pat, Patons Astra yarn collection. It's this really nice silky soft yarn that I actually bought more colors of it because I thought I was going to make a second hat and then I got distracted with other projects. So I didn't make another hat, but I have the yarn for next year if I want to make another hat. Then I started actually partnering up with Hobie Yarn. I do a bunch of campaigns. That just essentially means that they send me a brief, you know, like, hey, this is the challenge. Here's some yarn you can pick from. Send you the yarn free of charge. You just got to make content for us. So I don't really get paid by them, but I do get paid in yarn. I see that as a content creator I probably should get paid for this but also I need money for yarn so if I'm gonna do the project anyways and you're willing to send me free yarn that I don't have to pay for it's a win-win for me so it's fine anywho the first project I've ever done for them this one here which I can't figure it out look at this I think I've worn this a handful of times I made it in January and January was really cold so I had to wear jackets so it's kind of hard to wear this and a jacket on top of it and then the warmer weather came you know you don't have to wear a jacket but it's not hot out like it is now I kind Kind of forgot I had this because I had wearing my denim jacket. Anywho, this was my very first hexagon cardigan. I used their Friends of Cotton. It was this yarn right here. I still have some of the green left because the green was the least used color. It was Friends Cotton 8 out of 8. And this was the brand. If you've worked with cotton yarn, a lot of times it's like really scratchy. You think I'm going to make like a dishcloth out of it, you know, like that kind of scratchiness. But this cotton, oh my goodness, it's so soft. It's softer than acrylic yarn, but it's so much heavier than acrylic yarn. So if this is something that you are interested in making using their cotton yarn, I would do it. It's really nice, but here's the thing. It's going to feel a little bit like a weighted blanket. It's very, very heavy. Like you can kind of see the drapiness of it. So I think that if I were to make another one for myself, I probably would use acrylic just because it's a little bit lighter. But this yarn was the only yarn that had these colors that I really loved. I love my vintage retro colors and this suits it so well. I really like this. If you don't know what a hexagon sweater is, is you make two, literally, you can see it in the arm, hexagons, which are six sides. The reason I say this is because I've done five sides at one point, got up to here and being like, something ain't right. Sometimes not everything clicks. And you just keep going until you have your desired length. Usually it's until like your arm length then you stop, you make a second one, and then you can see in the back here, you just join them together. It's a very simple project to do.
do. I think I give it, let's say an eight out of 10. It was my very first time doing it. Changes would have been made such as I think for the neck right here is instead of attaching it all the way to the top, I would have stopped here and kind of flattened that out. And then that way the back of my neck would have been a little bit more flatter. I have made several other versions of this type of sweater or cardigan, which I will be showing you in this video. And I had made those improvements. Next, February. I don't know what happened, but I didn't make a lot in February. And I think it's because I started this here. I think I started mid January. It was a very long project for me. So it went into like halfway through February, roughly. The only project that I have written down here for February is this one right here. This is really cute. I wore it once on Valentine's Day and then I hadn't worn it since. And it's not that I didn't wanna wear it, I just didn't. But if you watch my very first vest video that I did. I, I made this one, but in like these other types of colors. I did a lot of changes to this one. I did the same like shape, but I added a collar and I added these little side arm ribbing. And then I made the bottom just a little bit more cinched in. I really like the fit of this one a lot better than the black one. Well, it was mostly black with a bunch of colors. And I wanted to go back to that one and make the changes that I did to this one on that one. Haven't done that yet because usually when I'm done a project, I just start a new one and don't look back. So yeah. This one here, I probably give let's say an eight out of 10. The yarn is acrylic. I believe it is the impeccable yarn. So it is a little chunky, more like a turtleneck underneath this. So it was a little, a little hot, but uh, still pretty cute. We're on to March now. I think the first thing I made in March was that back there, the deer. Can I get it down without touching everything? It was a kit my sister got for Christmas and it was actually a reindeer and it wanted you to give it a little red nose, but I said, nope, that's gonna be a little deer head. And then I ended up just buying this plaque here. I think I had a lens mill, the, the ticket's still on it. And then I just stained it a darker color. I drilled some holes, my dad drilled some holes in the back and then I just tied it on. So he just sits just like this. I think his name should be Wendell. He looks like a Wendell. I think I could have done a bit better on his nose, but overall following the kit was really, really easy. I'd probably give him a 10 out of 10 just cause he's so adorable. The other thing that I did make that I actually don't own anymore because I didn't make it for myself. I actually made it for one of my favorite YouTubers, Alexandra Gator. And she does all these like home reno videos on her channel. And she wears the cutest sweaters, like the cutest sweater. So I reached out, asked if she wanted a sweater that I could make she said, yes, I made it. I sent it to her. I have a video for it, but she looks so cute in it. I think it's such an adorable sweater and I'm kind of like upset that I didn't get to keep it because I love the colors, but it's okay. I have enough things. It was a really cute hexagon cardigan. I did it the exact same way that I did my first one, but I did make those changes that I was talking about. I probably give that a 10 out of 10. I really love the colors. I think I did a better job on hers than I did on mine. And that's why I always have to make stuff for me first, if ever I make it for anybody else. So that that way, you know, I do it wrong the first time for me and I do it right the second time for somebody else. And then the other thing that I did make in my March is this follow boy sweater. Oh, I absolutely love it. It is for their new album or the new album that came out on March the 23rd. So much for Stardust. This was their initial logo when they were just starting to tease the album, like way back when I wanted it. So I ended up making this one here. This is tapestry crochet. I love tapestry crochet. It is my favorite form of crocheting. It might look more difficult than you think it is. It's really not. You're just switching between yarns. And as long as you have like a grid, like I love using my Procreate and making a grid and mapping it out. So it's like all pixelated. You just have to follow it basically. And sometimes I do make mistakes, but that's fine. I'm really surprised at how nice it did turn out like the circle of it. I wore it only once. I know. The reason is I don't I don't really like the fit of it. And I thought I would like the fit of it because the other project that I made last October, it was the pumpkin like jack-o'-lantern one, which kind of is the same from this, where it was like the opposite colors and then the face. I used the same yard, I used the same grid, but this one just fits a little bit differently. And so I think I might take a few things apart, not a lot. And this collar, it's too constricting. I found a new way that I like doing my collars. And then I think the bottom of it too. I think it could have been a little bit longer. Like it's a little too short. I don't know. Like I used the same method. Maybe my tension has gotten a little bit tighter. So it's like shrunk things. I don't know. 
So I might actually make the bottom like a little bit longer with the white. This sweater here caused me so many problems. That's another reason why I haven't worn it, just because of the problem. This is where I got into that whole lot die debacle of 2023 that I still won't let go. It's the whole reason why I look at lot dies now and lot numbers and color batches because I don't want it to ever happen again and I don't want it to happen to you. And you can clearly see right here, maybe you can't clearly see, but right here is a different black than this. This black looks a little bit more faded than here. It's the same Bernat black yarn same different dye batches the dyes are different and i was so mad about that at the time i was so furious because i had started doing the back or something in the other color and then i realized like halfway through that the colors didn't match but i didn't notice it when i was doing the front half so i wasn't gonna undo the whole front half this stayed a little bit wonky with colors i had to completely redo the back i think it was like two-thirds of the way done the back when I had to completely scrap it and redo it. This one caused me a little bit of frustration. I think I give this a seven, although Fall Out Boy, you're my favorite band. I love y'all. But this was a little bit of a doozy. So I think I'm gonna redo the collar and add a little bit more on the bottom and then that way fall, I'm good to go. We are on to April now. What did I make in April? I actually made this one. Look how bright and vibrant it is. I I it's pretty much this, the dulled down version of this. I love this. I wore this so much. I wore this as much as I could wear it. I probably would have worn it for this video if I did not have to like discuss it and like kind of show you the features and stuff. But I'm also just kind of upset that I can't wear it right now because it is almost July and it's too hot. I actually had to go out and buy shorts. I don't wear shorts, but it's so hot that I had to buy shorts. So this is kind of the new technique of collar that I was kind of mentioning on the last sweater. I really love how it looks like, you know, a pointed collar and I sewed, I sewed them down. Just really, really cute. I really love this. And that's what I want to do to this one. I want to take this white collar off and do a white collar that looks like this. It will fit my head better. I think it will look a little bit cuter. I'm going back to the collar days. I was really into collars back in like 2013, 2014, 2015. 15 and I'd wear them underneath all my sweaters and then I kind of like straight away and now I'm back. This 10 out of 10. 10 out of flipping 10. I kind of want to make it in like every type of color combo possible. And then also during the month of April I did team up with Hobie Yarn again. This campaign was me trying out different yarns for their new collection. I did an unboxing video for that and then I did a video of what I had made with it. So I'm going to show you a few things. Did end up making this cute little tote bag. This was with their Pearly Haze yarn. I I think it's pretty cute. I really do like the colors. I, I really just love the texture of this yarn. I give this seven out of 10. I probably could have attached the handles a little bit better. I definitely should have put a liner in this, which I didn't, but I was making so many projects at the time that I threw caution to the wind and just wanted to get it done. I also had made this cup cozy, which is kind of falling apart a little bit. This yarn is the Honey Bunny Shine, but because of the type of yarn, it does kind of fall apart a little bit, but also like I use this a lot. This is a little cup cozy for my ice caps. It does have a little bit of sparkle to it. It's very, very soft. I also feel like with this type of yarn, a single crochet just doesn't look right. So I ended up doing half doubles for this. I also made this with the Honey Bunny Shine. It was my very first attempt at making one of those zigzag pillows. Probably five out of 10. It's okay. It could have been better. And then I think I made like a few more cup cozies with some yarn, but that was essentially it for like that video. And then at the end of the month, I actually made this shirt here. You probably are like, why are you in black and white right now? Well, the whole concept of this was for me to make the entire project in black and white. So you wouldn't know the colors I chose to the very end when I revealed it to you. So that's why it's still in black and white. So if you haven't seen that video, I'm not gonna give anything away of what color it is. You can watch that video and then just be surprised at the end. I really like that concept and I feel like I wanna do more of those type of videos. This one here was a t-shirt attempt at a hexagon cardigan. It is a hexagon and I made two sides, but what I ended up doing is because usually for a hexagon sweater, the sides are going to like line up. When I knew the length of the sleeve I wanted, I actually stopped. And when you do a hexagon, you're pretty much just going in a circle. What I did was I started here. I went, oh, that's where the sleeve starts. I put a little stitch marker, worked my way back. Oh, that's where the other sleeve starts 
put a stitch marker and just kind of went like this for the bottom half so I wasn't adding any more length to the sleeve but to be honest the sleeve could have ended like all the way up here like it did not need to be this long it could have just been like that I just made two I sewed them together I made another one of these little collars so sometimes I do get these questions where people ask how do I make the buttonholes for this you don't have to all you do is you see the holes all of these are buttonholes the whole shirt is just made out of buttonholes so all I did was I just kind of like lined it up and just put it through one of those little openings it fastens itself I think I give this a 6 out of 10 I know it's a very low score but I've not worn it I haven't worn it the sleeves are a little bit too long and there's nothing I can do about it unless I take the whole thing apart because it's not like I can just like undo it here I would have to undo everything just to get back here I think the fit is just a little bit too big for me it's really cute this was project was more of a let's try this out on yarn I think I thrifted the yarn for a pretty good price so it wasn't like I spent a lot of money on it but it was more of like a test project I just kind of made this just to test to see how it would work so then that way in the future I would know where to fix the issues all right let's start off with these during april there was local yarn store day this was literally like the end of april i think it was like the 26th or the 27th or the 28th or the 29th i don't remember the end of april there was local yarn store day in my area which is southern ontario so me and my sister oh my goodness we went all the way to paris ontario that's like two hours away from us just to go to yarn stores and it's not like we just went there for a yarn store we stopped at a bunch of the yarn stores on the way there and we bought a bunch of yarn so I ended up just making a ton of bandanas <laughs> I know. So let's just speed round the bandanas, okay? All the bandanas, I give them like an 8 out of 10. They're pretty cute. This one is the Lions brand 24-7 yarn. It is a cotton yarn. It's a little scratchy but not as scratchy as some other cotton yarns it still has some flexibility it is still pretty soft these two here are actually from the same yarn which is i think it's called something bamboo or bamboo something i don't remember baby bamboo it's called baby bamboo they were on sale at the needle emporium in ancaster ontario pretty much the whole thing just made one bandana i think there was like maybe like a meter 100 centimeters i don't know how much that is in feet or in Inches, a strand of yarn left so it wasn't a lot and I had originally made this one for the video I lost it lost it for like a month so I had to make another one for the video and I swear if I would have lost this one I had one more yarn so I could have done it one more time now I have two of them I really really like this yarn and I wish I would have bought it in more colors and then the other one I did was this here I think this was the Estelle yarn really nice lavender purple i don't know if it's coming off lavender because it's like hitting like the pink and the orange and it's looking a little gray maybe if i'm out of the shot i don't know it is like this really pretty purple i really like this it feels like acrylic yarn it is really soft very lightweight and it has a nice drape to it and that is something that i always mention in all of my videos when it comes to bandanas but when you make a bandana you want it to drape kind of like this on your head the finer the yarn the better it is going to drape so then that way when you put it on your head like this it follows the shape of your head and it doesn't like stick up like this I have made a bandana with the wrong yarn and it literally does that because it's this thicker acrylic yarn so making a bandana thinner the yarn the better it's gonna turn out now I realize that I actually don't have a video for the bandanas but this this is the pattern that I use so feel free to screenshot it and make your own bandanas with it but yeah, sorry, I don't have a video for this yet. Maybe I'll make one in the future. And then I also made some cup cozies. I think I made this one first. It was too big. So then I made this smaller one. This one is the Wool in the Gang, super chunky, super thick. The most expensive yarn I've ever bought in my entire life. It was $33 for a skein of yarn, which is a little ridiculous, but I will pay it again because I love it. I just love how this turned out as a cup cozy and I know is it really financially wise of me to spend $30 to make a cup cozy probably not but I really want to do it again they had a really nice orange and I know there's other brands out there that have wool like this that might be a little bit cheaper I have yet to find them actually I did find it one time at my favorite yarn store which is the creative knitter in Ridgeway Ontario I have to shout them out because I love that store they had it they went on clearance I went to go buy it and they didn't have it anymore but anyways I really do like this cup cozy and I have a lot of yarn left like I probably could make like five more if not more cup cozies with that yarn I know it's the only thing I can really think of because it's so chunky so chunky if I were to make a sweater I would have to spend like 
hundred dollars worth of yarn to do it pretty much it would be very chunky making cute little cup cozies for the summer or all year round for ice caps i love doing that i give this a 10 out of 10 this is like one of my favorite ones the next project i'm going to show you i made it i love it pippin has taken it over and it is hers now this do you see there's so much cat hair on this thing now this is the other pillow that i made okay i made this one mm, experimented with that one so then i can make this beautiful pillow now this yarn here is actually craft smart yarn i went with craft smart yarn just because i really fell in love with this orange here oh it's just like the perfect vintage orange i think i was like talking about how much i loved it in the video it's not super bright but it's not pumpkin like where it's like kind of muted down it's just the perfect color and they have the perfect brown and the perfect yellow to go with it it's pretty easy you're just making a chevron zigzag blanket and then you close it in attach it and then you just sew the sides in the middle and obviously you put a pillow in and i actually found this pillow at lens mill and it was like eight dollars and it was the perfect size for it if you are interested in making any of these i don't have technically tutorials but i do have videos of me vlogging the process of how i made this this also is a 10 out of 10 i just wish I could use it, but I can't because it's Pippin's now. And where I keep it, I keep it on my editing chair when I'm not editing. And when I have to edit and I move the pillow, Pippin just gives me the dirtiest looks because I moved her pillow. And she'll only sit on it if it's on that chair. All right, we're finally on the sixth month, June. Let's get into what I made this last month. Again, with Hobie Yarn, I partnered up with them for their campaign called On Holiday with Hobie. And so basically it was a challenge to make something that I would wear if I were to go on vacation. I don't really go on vacation because I don't have money to go on vacation, nor does anywhere really interest me going on vacation unless it's like a cabin in the middle of the woods by a lake. Old man stuff. I ended up making the old man outfit of my dreams and that is this this really cute sweater now what i did is off of that t-shirt hexagon thing i made i took those measurements and i put it on this one here but instead of making it a hexagon i ended up doing a flat granny stitch and i don't know if that's the technical term that's like kind of what i found but you know when you do a granny square those stitches where you go around instead of going around you just go back and forth and so that's what i did with this yarn here now this yarn was hobie's four out of eight mercer sized cotton yarn and oh boy did i make a mistake buying it I didn't realize how thin it was it was just like I've just been doing projects where the yarn's been getting thinner and thinner and thinner I'm like oh okay like this is fine <sighs> this was this was a doozy I should have went with their six out of eight cotton this one here was the eight out of eight too thick for what I wanted it and I don't know why I didn't pick the six out of eight might have been they didn't have the color I wanted because I really wanted this kind of like brown off-white color and this chocolate color so I don't know if they just didn't have it and that's why I went with this thinner yarn but what I ended up doing which smart me I doubled up the yarn because I doubled up the yarn it is a little heavier it is a little thicker I got the project done faster I think I probably still would be working on it if I hadn't I made the front panels I made the back panel and then I made the sleeve panels here then I sewed them all together and of course I ended up making a another collar this here I probably give maybe an eight nine out of ten just probably an eight. I'm going to say eight out of 10. I know it's adorable. I love it, but it's a little heavy for summer. And I think for the sleeves, what I would have done, and I think I'm going to do that in the future if I decide to make another one of these, is I'm going to make the front panels, the back panels, and then attach them on the top, lay it flat. And then I will, with the same stitch, just continue the stitches on it and would have made the arm attached to it instead of making separate pieces. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm not making any sense right now because when I attach them, it kind of looks like this it looks a little you see that little dip right there it would have been the same stripes going this way i think it would have looked a little bit better it's fine and then i did buy these cute little wooden buttons that i wasn't too sure of at first but i think they suit it really well now this was one part of the project i did do a second part i made this cute little hat it was supposed to be more of a bucket hat but i've never made a bucket hat before got a little floppy and at first it turned into like a bowler hat which was not the vibe so i had to take it apart i think it's cute it looks like a floppy little sun hat i think it's a pretty cute little outfit i give the hat probably a seven out of ten i could have done a little bit better but for my first time making a hat like this i don't think i did a bad job we are now at the very last item that i made for the last six months oh okay 
Okay, so the last item that I made, the video literally just came out a few days before this one. It's this bag here. It is the I Think You Should Leave bag. It is based on a sketch from a TV show on Netflix. Some of y'all might get the reference, some of y'all might not that's fine. The show is not for everyone. And to be honest, some of the skits aren't for me either, but majority of the skits I find hilarious. When this one came out, it was season three and it was an episode when he's yelling 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos, 55 pies, like into a drive through menu. 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos. And there's a back, by the way. If you didn't think I did the whole thing, I did the whole entire order, exactly how he says it. And get this, I even put burger material on the inside and lined it. I learned my lesson. I put some liner in this bag and his burgers, which I feel like suits it pretty well. This bag here, I actually used impeccable yarn to make. It was, it was pretty good. I like impeccable yarn, especially when I do my tapestry projects. I do like using impeccable because it's usually what I use to make them. So like the grid's going to be the same. The measurements are going to always be the same. And then that way I'm not doing too much intricate math, which I don't like doing to make my projects. Now, a few things that I would take into consideration when I'm crocheting tapestry, the words are always going to kind of be like on a little bit of a slant. And that's kind of why I want to learn how to knit is because the knitting, all the columns, they're just like up and down. So I feel like the words and text would be a little bit easier to do. I think what I should have done right here, you see where that like little gap is? on that end. I think I should have probably gone through the whole bag before I put the liner in and just gotten like some of the same orange yarn stitched in some of the missing places. Cause like the ends kind of need it. I think I need it like, the W is kind of fine. For the most part, like you couldn't read it, but it was just kind of difficult with some of the letters. That's the thing with tapestry. As long as it looks good, as long as you get the gist of it, I'm fine with it. Will I go back with the yarn and fix it? Maybe. I don't know. I have other projects that I need to start working on. But yeah, this 10 out of 10, I don't care. This is 10 out of 10. This is amazing. I think, you know, okay, 9, 9.5. 9.5 out of 10. Only reason is because, you know, like the end there a few little things that I need to fix. And it's the 5% that I'm knocking off because I know I'm lazy, I'm probably not gonna do it. So I'm deducting it from myself personally, not the bag. <laughs> okay, I've been sitting for well over an hour filming this. I cannot believe it. I knew this was gonna be a doozy of a video because there was so much stuff that I had to go through and some stuff I forgot I completely made, like the deer back there, until like five minutes before I made this video. All of this stuff that I'm showing you now has our own individual videos and all the videos are listed in the description below if you're interested in watching any of these. That's where they are. I think that does it for this video. If you're new to my channel, like sewing, thrifting, and crafting, and of course, crocheting, why not hit the subscribe button? You can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok. I think that's it. See so y'all have a good day now.